I love creating stories. We were a we, and we were happy. No one should have to be alone at night like that. I'm terrified about my future. I hate knowing that I'm not as good as I thought I was. I'm a background person. Are you listening? I am my father's daughter. I love throwing shit away. If I ever saw him on the streets, I'd murder him. I don't feel like I have anything to be proud of. Do you care? I'm proud of learning to drive. People will only change when they want to. Creating art has saved my life. Don't be afraid to be close to someone. It takes a lot of work to be fake. I just want to be myself. Today's generation disgusts me. I love to bring joy to people and put a smile on their face. I'm Ryan Worth Enemy. I'm also the only person that can defeat her. I just feel like there must be something wrong with me and people don't want to be around me. The fact that I can't figure out how many people perceive me drives me nuts. Did I perform? I'm free. I'm a work in progress. Everyone is. Morning, Barber! Oh, good morning, good morning, sir. I'll be with you in a minute. What can I do for you? Uh, just short back and sides, please. Short back and sides? How do you do that? Uh, simple, just short back and sides. It's not a razor cut. Razor, razor, cut, cut, blood, spurt, artery, murder, oh, thank God! It's, it's just, just the scissors! scissors. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love that one, Dad. I know how you do. It's so much fun. You know, honey, why don't you, uh, go online and find us another one, okay? okay. Sorry. I don't want to hear it. She's my daughter. I don't give a damn. You're done. I have a half an hour left. If you stay here another half hour, we're going to have a problem. A, a problem? We're going to have a problem? I think so. She's my daughter. Pervert. I would say that. You're a pervert. She'll hear you. She's going to know what you did. I didn't do anything. You're a pervert! Don't say that! Why? What are you going to do? You're going to hit me? Go ahead. I want you to hit me. You sick piece of shit. And after you hit me, you're going to jail where you belong. And my daughter's going to take that beautiful little girl so far away that you're never going to see her again. You sick fucking pervert. So go ahead. Hit me. I want you to. Get out. Honey! Uh, listen, honey, I'm sorry, I have to go. No. You said you're going to read another he one. He has to go, sweetie. No, please. Uh, next week. We'll read an extra one, okay? Promise? I promise. I love you. I love you too, Daddy. I'll walk you out. Get ready for bed.
hate holding the door open for people who don't thank you. I hate not landing an audition, but then again, I hate not going after my dream more. I hate, more than anything else, arguing with people who are Red Sox fans. How can you not understand that the Yankees are just superior? I'm terrified about my future. I hate thinking about it. When I think about my future and realize I'm not always quite motivated to go through the obstacles to achieve my goals and dreams, it's frightening. I know I could fail. What's even more frightening, though, is that when I'm the least motivated I can get, sometimes I'm OK that I might not get my dreams. Sometimes I'm OK with my dreams remaining dreams. I find myself getting more and more comfortable with the idea of doing a mediocre job. I don't want to think about my future.
He got to go on a national Broadway tour, and I felt so blessed to be there with him when he found out. I was happiest when I was with him. He was the most fun and funnest person I knew, and I would have done anything for him. It was tough to see him go off on tour and lose him, but I was happier for him than it had been for anyone. About halfway through the tour, though, he broke his foot and had to come home. I was his personal wheelchair pusher and drove him everywhere he needed to go when he couldn't be walking. Change. He wasn't the same. So, if I was ever this broken down, would you be wheeling me around? What? Uh, if I was ever where you are, would you wheel me around? No. 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 What is wrong? My foot's broken. I know that, and I'm sorry, but it's not what I mean. Well, then what do you mean? I feel like we're changing, and I want to fix it. Just tell me what it is so I can fix it. Maybe you should talk to somebody about that. Find a therapist or something. It was like he just woke up one day and decided to stop being my friend. Thought I had done something wrong. His friendship was the one rock in my life, and I felt completely unmoored. I didn't know what to do with myself. That summer before I went back to school was the lowest I had ever been. When I finally gave up on him though, I realized I wasn't alone. Having that one person completely out of my life made me feel freer than I had ever felt in my entire life. And I suddenly had new friends. People that I love now. I am so happy he is out of my life and that I have these new people in my life, and I am so thankful for everything I get to do with them. And so today, right now, is the happiest that I can remember being. No one sees me as their best friend. I'm just someone to talk to when they have nothing else to say to anyone else. I'm a background person. Just filler. Paper. I'm someone you can easily tell your secrets to because I'm not close enough to anyone to want to spread rumors or have any sway over what people would think of you. Who would take me seriously? I'm not the person you look to to date or hang out with. I'm the person you invite to a party because it's cool to have a lot of people attending. Everyone ignores me in favor of relationships that they've already established. I try to make people like me. I try to fit into conversations that I'm not a part of, but I just dig myself a deeper hole. No one comes to me for conversation. Are you there? Are you listening? Do you care? Alzheimer's disease. Sometimes I think it's like a person. He's been a shadow over my life. He's claimed both of my grandmothers. I loved them both. I make a point to see the one who's still with us as often as possible. I hope she remembers who I am. I hate that. I hate him for doing that to her. The last thing I remember about my grandmother who passed was how he enveloped her being wrapping his cloak of fading gray around her, making her like a child falling into a pile of crunchy leaves. Her eyes broke my heart. Her pupils were so big, and then her eyes wouldn't open anymore. A priest came to pray with us and sing in her ear. There was some faint, fantastical hope that it might fix everything. Crying in my coffee helped me. Sometimes I think Alzheimer's disease is a person. If I ever met him on the street, 
I'd murder him. She left because she was too mentally ill to take care of me. On December 5th, 2002, the police informed my father he has been accused of voyeuristic behavior and of having molested me. I suppose I have no proof that my mother was behind it, but that's what I always believed. Now, anytime I think things can't get any worse, I think of that song, and of that moment in the car with my father. Even at a time when things couldn't get any lower, there was light and hope. My father gave me the car, and it's the one I drive today. I know who I am thanks to him. I know I am my father's daughter, and it's not worth the change who I am for anyone. I carry my past and my father with me wherever I drive. I want you to know that I am happy for you. I wish not. She go down on you in a theater. Does she speak eloquently? And would she have your baby? And should she make a really excellent mother? Cause I love the game that we made wasn't able to make enough for you to be open wide.
I love creating stories. I hate knowing that I'm not as good as I always thought I was, and having to face that fact. <laughs> I love adding elements to my story that are bordering on the taboo just to push the limits of comfort and making people think. Today's generation absolutely disgusts me. I hate the disrespect, lack of class, and self-respect that has infected these people. I love to bring joy to people, put a smile on their face. I'm terrified I won't be able to succeed properly. <laughs> I love to make people laugh. It's one of the most fulfilling things a person can experience. I despise large groups of people. I hate it. It drives me absolutely insane. I hate being around people I don't like. I'm not a people person. I hate to do the dishes. I hate to write when I have nothing to say. And I hate auditioning. I'm terrible at it. And that's really frustrating. <sighs> I love to make people laugh. I love to sing and have people look up to me. I love spending time with my family and learning what they were like growing up. I love taking pictures of just about anything. I love laughing and playing guitar. I love auditioning. And I love learning new things and improving on anything I'm not the best at. I don't really remember a time when I was truly and completely happy. I've had times in my life where there was practically nothing to be happy about. And times, like right now, where there are a lot of things to be happy about. My childhood is the happiest I can ever remember being. Playing with life-sized bricks in all different colors. Going to the zoo and having a snake wrapped around your neck. Spending time with my uncle before he passed. My mother is still battling cancer. This would be the happiest time of my life if it wasn't fairly obvious that she was having a reoccurrence. The truth is, I'm just not a very happy person. I think it has something to do with the fact that I think too much. Dissect anything and everything and Analyze anything and everything. Don't be afraid to be close to someone. Don't let one bad experience allow you to trust anyone. Give things time. Allow yourself to give others time. Give yourself time. Share your time with someone else. I am my own worst enemy. I am also the only person that can defeat her.
Because you're fat. Because people think less of me for liking you. Because you're just not cool enough to go out with. I, uh, this has all just happened so fast. You wanted it to happen. Well, uh, you did. You told me you loved me. I lied. We were fucking. It's what you wanted to hear. I know I did. You didn't mean it. You didn't mean it when you told me that you loved me? No! I see. Hate me, hate me, please. I'm sorry. You're sorry? You're sorry? Tell me why you're sorry. I'm sorry that when you kissed me for the first time that I kissed it back because it was my first time and I didn't want to waste it. I'm sorry that I sucked you into thinking we were actually boyfriend and girlfriend. I'm sorry this happened because I have to maintain my image and the only way to do that is to follow a cold mathematical formula about who's cool enough to go out with me and who'll just drag me down. I'm sorry that I'm a tool of external opinions. I'm sorry that I told you I loved you when I really didn't. I just like fucking you. I'm sorry that I fooled you into thinking I'm a man when I'm a boy. I'm sorry. For everything. I forgive you. What? what? I adore you! On the last day of summer rep, I felt very accomplished. I had done my job and really made myself known. I went into this experience knowing very few people. The day it all ended, though, I was able to go around the whole room and got a hug from everyone. What meant the most is that it was an honest hug. They, they weren't hugging me because they thought they had to. They weren't hugging me because everybody else did. All of these people that I had felt so far away from only months before were all hugging me because they were honestly going to miss me. I felt like I belonged. And it has been so long since I have. It was the happiest I could ever remember being. I loathe with a scalding passion spending an absurd amount of time going to the tribal gymnastics to get a dress on. Not only that, the second I look in the mirror, I realize my bra is showing. Either the strap sticks out or the top part, usually a solid color, is suddenly floral or zebra striped in the breast area. This only happens when I've spent all morning getting ready for an event and procrastinating getting dressed for the last five minutes. I hate putting on dresses. Just once, men had to put on a dress. They gain a whole new appreciation for what we go through. What I hate most about myself is my constant inability to just be myself. One of my biggest flaws is trying too hard. I try too hard with practically anything and everything, especially when it comes to my social life. I try too hard to fit in with the people I want to be with. I try too hard to be the person that I feel pressured to be. Then when people tell me to lighten up and be myself, I try too hard to do that. My worst fear is that people perceive me this way to the point that they can't take me seriously. I want people to take me seriously. I want to be accepted for who I am. I've been struggling to find my true self while at the same time trying too hard to be someone I'm not or fit in with everyone. 
I've been doing this for so long that I feel like self is how I tend to try too hard. It's been built into my personality like a brand on my skin. I've been doing this for so long, it's hard for me to rediscover what my true self really is. And whenever I try to relax and let it come out, I get no reaction from others. That refusal from people is what makes me continue to be self-conscious and try too hard. It consumes me in my everyday life. I feel like it becomes worse and worse every day to the point where I feel like I'm losing friends. That makes my self-esteem even worse. I constantly feel set aside and apart from other people. I feel like my personality is the least common amongst the people where I am and that it doesn't fit in well at all. It bothers me so badly and I feel like I don't belong where I am. People tell me to embrace my innocence and be myself. I always get shit for it when I try though. Who would want to be something that they get shit for? All of these problems get me so badly that I cry. I cry a lot. It's made me hate who I am, the way I was raised, and that I have to be with these people for the next few years. Having to be surrounded by others who are friends with everyone and can be their true selves with no problem just makes me feel more out of place. I need some miracle to help me go past this fucking problem. I just want to be myself. Glue the pieces to my car, crash it into a ball. I don't want to feel it all. I want to break the purple heart. Douse it in gasoline till the fire burns clean. Then flip a cigarette like that movie Con Air, doused in gasoline. And if you think that you're better than me, you're right. There's no one to love, no one to trust in my life.
else? No, I think that's about it. All right, have a wonderful weekend. Thank you. Hello, I was here before. Oh, yes, I'm sorry, sir. This will only take one moment. I have to get No. Uh, sir, I just have to get her. I don't care. I was here first. She came after me. I've been waiting. You're absolutely right, sir. Let's see what you have. All right, listen to me. This is how I want things done. I, I'm sorry, ma'am. This will only take a moment. You can have a seat if you want. Why are you sorry? Why are you sorry? I was here first. What are you apologizing to her for? I was here before, and I had to I drive. was here first. I, and sir, sir, you're absolutely right. I, I didn't hear you. You didn't answer my question. I want to know why you're sorry to her. You saw me waiting yes, here. Yes, I did, and I'm taking care of you. It's not what you're doing. I do not like your attitude. I'm going somewhere else. You're just a kid. You don't know anything. He's friendly. Are you crying because of what he said? Have a wonderful weekend. Long-time girlfriend were on a walk by the lake. I'll never forget the first time I knew I was in love. We were walking slowly, noticed the moon on the water's surface. We walked, holding each other's hands, saying little, just enjoying the presence of the other. Movie-style kiss under a light drizzle, romantic music on our heads and slow dancing. We felt the rain, but we didn't run for cover. Instead, we just felt it hit our skin and watched it disrupt the soft static of the water. No one cared that we were two men dancing. No one said anything. I knew then that this was real and that it was okay. I was in love with another man and I was going to kiss him for the first time. And no one could stop that. Wet and happy, we gazed into each other's eyes. I realized who I was that night. I was just another person. Our hands squeezed, we kissed, and we felt each other and the rain. We were happy together. We were we, and we were happy. A few weeks ago, as I was driving the minivan, I noticed an old man parked on the side of the road. He was thin, and then, and he looked so scared. So I pulled over. I helped him push his car to the parking lot nearby. He thanked me. But I couldn't help but notice how scared he still looked. His eyes were small and baked with fear. And there was sweat pouring out of him. So I stayed to wait for the tow truck with him. No one should be alone on the night like that. Need a long term, time to take.
Take your seats, please. I said take your seats. There's something we need to talk about. There isn't. It's time to start class. No, we need to talk to you about something, and I guess I've been nominated to be the one to do it. I'm really not interested Ma in Ma'am, we really need to talk to you about some of the problems that we've had in the band. If you have problems, I'd say you need to look to them yourself, because they're issues with your own attitudes. Ma'am, please, sit. No. Excuse me? No, ma'am. I'm not going to sit. We have problems that we need to talk about, and we need to talk about them now. I see. Well, you'd better start talking then. The play was anticipated. It was going to be epic. The most vivid and challenging our school had ever experienced. That performance was one of the best I've done in my entire life. My friends and family were excited to see me in my theatrical debut, and I couldn't wait to show them what I could do. From the moment the curtain went down and I went to the after-show reception to see my parents was one of the most blissful and euphoric experiences I've ever had. My parents were in tears at how well I did and how happy I was. Be accepted, but it doesn't do justice to who I am. So sometimes I just go with the bullshit and allow people to think whatever they want. Well, I comfort myself in knowing that those who doubt me will never make it in life. I am extremely ashamed of the fact that. Whenever I'm in a terrifying or extremely uncomfortable situation, my nerves get the better of me. And in the worst possible moment of any of those situations, I laugh. I can't control it. I've gotten into trouble so many times because of it. Once when I was little, my mom warned me in my closet to give me a spanking. I can't remember what I did, but I'm sure I was very guilty. My eyes were about to burst with tears and out of nowhere. <laughs> Then, terrified silence. My mom just stared at me, then later grounded me for laughing when she was serious. Another time, in my high school honor choir, a senior boy was teaching us his student conducting piece for district's competition and then being grilled by a chorus teacher. To answer a question, the nervous boy stuttered. They, uh, they have to see the retard. Well, the thick tension of the room through my teacher's seriousness was just too much for me. <laughs> My teacher glared at me as if she were about to execute me. And after a few moments of deathly silence, bitch. Can we not talk about it here? We will talk about it wherever we want to talk about it. Do you understand? I cannot believe you would be that disrespectful with your teachers again. Mom! Don't interrupt us! Can I please just not do this here? Why? You embarrassed? Of course I am! Good. You should be. Now you know how we feel. How embarrassed we are that our daughter is so disrespectful of her teachers and unappreciative of the education that she has. We are very disappointed in you. You just don't understand. She twists what I say. She makes me out to be the bad what guy. What possible reason would she have to do that? She do that. Why won't you listen to my side of it? I think we've heard that well enough. Why the hell did you come then? You watch your language. Why did you come to the meeting if you already decided she was right and I'm wrong again? We will talk about this more at the moment. Um, excuse me? Yes. Is that your daughter? Yes, it is. Can we help you? Um, can I talk to you both for a moment? We were just about to leave. 
actually. I understand, but it should only take a moment, and it's very important. Please. All right. Wait here. What have you done now? Nothing. Wait here. Fine. Fine. sorry. What? We're sorry. That was one of the mothers of one of the other students in the band. She told us. She told us how bad it's been. She told us. We're sorry. 
You were right and we were wrong. We should have listened. Car warmed up. <laughs> On the way back, we want you to tell us about everything that's been happening again. Okay? All right. My parents apologized through sobs and tried to hug me more while I was in the back seat. I couldn't believe it. Tears of joy streamed through my eyes and I felt so much lighter. The weight of all this hatred finally off my shoulders. about everything, and I used to cut myself. I would slice up my arms and thighs with razors and scissors. I still have scars to this day. I was a 
an extremely sad and lost person. I was pathetic and miserable. I cheated on my boyfriend, whom I've been with for years, with numerous people. I was drunk all of the time and made out with strangers and slept with people I barely knew. I lost my job because I was always hungover. I've never told anyone that. It was a pathetic time in my life, but I wouldn't be where I am without having gone through it. I'd love to say it was past me, but it's part of me. If it seems sometimes like I'm distant or not as available as you'd like me to be, then I'd ask for some grace. I'm going to overcome it. My past is tough, but I believe yours is too. I'm still dealing with mine, though. will overcome it. I'm a work in progress. Everyone is. These are my scars. They're my past, and that will always be with me. But I'm going to overcome it. I know I will. I honestly feel like I have no friends. I have such a difficult time connecting with people. Sometimes I just think I don't understand what people want from friendships. And sometimes what I think they want is someone to build them up and someone they can build up. Someone that will praise them and tell them how amazing they are all the time. And I'm just not willing to be that way. I am a pretty honest person. I had thought I'd always been good to the people I tried to be friends with. Maybe I'm delusional. I have never really had any friends. In the past, I've always been a third wheel to a set of best friends, and at this point I feel like I have a ton of acquaintances that I don't enjoy being around, but that don't really enjoy me either. This entire situation really makes me sad sometimes, because I guess I just don't understand how to have friends in this society. Here, I think people are unbelievably fake and just love everyone, but don't really care about anyone. How many times have you heard someone say, oh my god, I love so and so, but never hang out with them? Never invite them places? Never make them feel welcome? I think it's disgusting. I think most people, to put it plainly, suck. In a nutshell, there's a lot I would like to change about people how fake they are, how disrespectful, how some can sit there and talk about themselves when they should learn to shut up and listen. I'm pretty sure what I feel about people and their fake faces is true, but at the same time I do fault myself some for not being able to maintain friendships. Sometimes I think there just must be something wrong with me if people don't want to be around. Don't nobody follow me, except maybe you. 
I can make you happy, you know, if you weren't already. I can do a lot of things. I do. dying. He was like a father to me since my dad lives in New York and I don't get to see him very often. All these emotions came rushing forward and I didn't know what to do. I felt like jumping off a bridge. I thought that there wasn't a god. My family started fighting over the tiniest things and soon half of them weren't even speaking to each other. My 
grandmother, grandfather, mother, and sisters were there. We were all in the same boat. We got ourselves out of this hopelessness. And we are the reason that we are stronger today. We don't take anything for granted. And I've learned to live my life as if every moment would be my last. I try to be honest all the time. I do things that are right for me and not care what others think about me. But at the same time, I feel like that's a lie. I do care what others think about me. And I try not to let that affect me. And it usually doesn't. There are certain times when it does. I don't know what being true to myself is, honestly. I need to figure out who I am before I figure out how to be true to myself. happy since I was a child, when I was between five and seven. All of my real accomplishments were then. I was a Girl Scout. I was in karate. I was in Catholic school. I didn't feel the pressure of being injured by others. I hate conflict. I hate the injury and pain that comes when you're hurt by someone close to you. It makes you wish you weren't you. It makes me wish I wasn't myself. That's why I love to perform. The rush I get from it is like nothing I've ever felt from anything else. I get to be someone else. I feel free. I'm not judged. I'm bipolar. And I am afraid people will judge me. I fit the role. I can't change it. When I perform, I'm not me. I'm not there. suicide more than three times. I was committed to a mental institution. I'm still not over it. When I perform, I'm free. I'm not there. I'm soaring over your heads and flying into your minds and warming myself in your heart. Sensitive. Yeah, I can't. 